and he would be there and he would just listen to me. I came to him when I had a, a legal issue and in that time of need, he pulled through for me. He says, if, even if you're in trouble, whatever, like, just call him if, if you need somebody. He knew my name before introducing myself. Uh, even uh, from the first session that you attend his class, it's odd, you don't see, well, professors do that. You never feel like you're, you're a burden to him. He has been always a role model for me. For him, uh, we are part of his family. A lot of students, they see him as a father figure. He's like a father, <laughs> exactly like a father. What, what do you expect from a good father? You always try, uh, try to ask him, uh, to guide you through your life. Even his daughter would stay up late with him because she, she wouldn't want to be home alone, so she would come to the university. And for as long as he stays in, in university to care of the students until 10, 11 p.m., she stays with him. But I don't think that other professors should be like Dr. Hannah. I think people, students respect him too much. He cares so much about the convenience of his students at the expense of his own. I'm sure that maybe if you interview some, some family member from his family, they're gonna say, okay, um, we're not very happy with, with this. Generally, if you have like negative stuff in your life, you wouldn't be able to bring out positive stuff in other aspects of your life. So I think if he's able to dedicate this much time to their, his students and his work, then probably like everything else is good. One last thing, we're having a normal lecture. So I want your attention, there is not, uh, we're, we, so please just, it's very important, whatever we cover here. So just forget about whatever happening, nothing happening much, okay? So let them do what they need to do, you just listen, okay? So the day before the final, I'll disappear, okay? So. Because there is, you're gonna be stressed to see me, you're gonna try to come from your home to look for me and you lose more time. So the exam is on, uh, when, on the 12 or 9? Nine? 9. 9, okay. So until the 7, by, I don't know, but until 3 o'clock in the morning on the 8th or something, I'll be there. Okay, after that, so let us get, go back to where we stopped. We were talking about strong connectivity. If you can go from, for example, if you can go from A to C to B, if from everywhere you can reach everywhere, then the graph is strongly connected. Because from A you can go everywhere, then there is some hope. If this doesn't work, we're done. The graph is not strongly connected because from A you cannot go everywhere. So my first question here is that, do I have a link between three and four? The answer is, yes, it is there. Four, take me to three, to three, we're not interested. Okay, four, take me to three, to four, we're not interested. Do I have five and three? 
we're not interested in that, okay? Five to one. K and J are adjacent. Okay, that means that I can go from I to J, but I don't want to make a link because maybe the link exists, so I have an if statement. If J and I are not already adjacent, then what I do? Add a link, and we're done. Exactly what we did. And maybe now, finally, you understand why we spent the time talking about Anybody? That's right. The, the, the whole class will be filled in with chairs, and uh, if there are no chairs, he always volunteered his chair. I still remember that. First thing he made clear is he does not sleep. So if you need to meet him at 4 a.m., 9 a.m., midnight, noon, any time that you're available, he'll be there to meet you, and a lot of times at your location as well. What differentiates Ayman Hanna from other professors is that I think he understands what it is to be a student. When you have final exams, believe it or not, you're doing something that looks like this. And you know how, you have to find the order. So you wake up in the morning and you say, wake up, go study computer science so, and then go eat. And I think all of you are doing that. You don't eat before you study. So, and then after you study, you can try to nap or you can take more computer science. And you go all the way until you sleep and you know what happened. I, we ha I have been through it for all my life, okay? So you go dream about computer science. He doesn't manage his time properly. You know, after classes and then people are talking to him and stuff like that, I always tell him, why don't you tell them you have to go? Your daughter is waiting for you. And then, like, he's just like, I have to, you know, I have to do this. And then I'm like, sometimes he's like, oh, I'm so tired, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why don't you retire? Go, retire already. Once two hash table, and you take every element here, you hash it here. And you make your Boolean here work on hash table. So everything you do now, based on that Boolean, you work here. If you keep in removing from the hash table and the threshold, become smaller. Then make a reverse copy, copy from hash table to the array, and the copy them back, and then every time you search, you search here. But is it a part of your core? Is it a, pre is it, is it a prerequisite to other ones? What if, you don't, what if you don't take it, and you say take it in the fall? Will you have enough courses or not? Probably not. So, so, that's, that's, so you, you should take it and learn Adigo. You will be able to do it. Is, uh, well, as I told you, look at that assignment and see what, maybe you need to do some learning on your own when, as you go. Yeah. Can I solve this assignment or I'm completely lost, I cannot do it. If you think that no, I cannot do it, then better don't take the course. And even wait for the prerequisite to take something else. Okay. It is really trivial, you just manipulate two data structure and you work with that. Okay, cool. Okay? Thanks. Dario says that he's uh, really sorry that he could not be here, he's, uh, he's having a Oh, not a problem, not a problem. But he told me to ask you if you could, uh, if there's some time that he can come for... for oh, I'll manage with him for sure. Huh? I will manage that, I will manage for, uh, to cover the, the course for him, the class for him. And I might give a lot of this material maybe next week on Sunday for the other class. If I don't give the lecture, I'll repeat the lecture for him between me and him. So tell him don't worry. Okay? okay? Tell him I was waiting for him. He said you'll yes, come and I, I sit in the first row. So, yes. So no, tell him, tell him. <laughs> I will cover it for him. Okay, yes. <laughs> you have your mark? You have you, you have the mark? Okay, I will yes. record it. So don't worry. It is not. No, no. So no, no. I will, I will, I will calculate it. They just make sure that you're following. Because that's what worries me. What? That you follow with all the material and everything. It's, yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, but uh, is there a way like uh, like the midterm can be cancelled and the final comes for everything? Or? I'll need to talk to you. Okay. 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 You have a few minutes outside. Yeah. Okay. Wait for me. I will talk. Okay. okay. We'll see what what can we do because it's not a usual situation with you. So hold on. <laughs> Hello. wasn't like this until like a year ago it started to be even like I started to feel even more sad and more depressed and recently I, I I've been doing stuff that I I never used to do like I remember my dad told me like he showed me this video of this 
person sleeping in class, and he said that that's so disrespectful. And then, at a young age, I knew that sleeping in class is not something that I should do. It's like, like, even if I'm extremely tired, I should respect the the teacher. But recently, like for the past two weeks, sometimes like when I want to sleep, I just sleep, and. I, I don't think it's particularly because I'm tired. It's just that I'm exhausted, like mentally exhausted.、Um, what was the question about my music? <laughs> I like his style. Like he, I'm Moroccan, so he brings that back to me. I used to watch a lot of Egyptian movies、uh, when I was uh, uh, young. And yeah, I, I love his style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> that's that's his trademark, I guess. That's his signature move, you know, with the with the with the ties and the socks. Yeah, he's a good dresser. It definitely added the it broke broke the ice, you know, given that we're studying a very abstract subject. He he always tries to sell, to choose most colorful ties and shirts,、uh, so that's why I generally enjoy because when you look at him. Uh, you feel happy at the beginning of the class, right? Because being dressed in the colors is going to give a kind of positive energy to your students. So I personally like it. He's uh, definitely uh, been known to、uh, have an eccentric、uh, style of、uh, dressing. Like on a Saturday when you're coming into the midterm and you see him with his fancy tie and his uh, his nice uh, his nice、uh, suit-like style appearance. Yeah, definitely. Oh. His ties, his ties. He、uh, he never runs out of ties.、Uh, I think we asked his daughter once how many ties he has. I think she told us he has a whole closet of ties, or somewhere somewhere around a hundred ties, two hundred, somewhere in the hundreds. It's more than one thousand, so. So I, I I lose track after after a point of time. It's more than one thousand. And many time I have this question: Why you wear a suit and a tie? And I don't think wearing a suit and a tie change anything in what you deliver. You can deliver whatever you want with a shirt and sweatshirt. Is the only thing that I believe. This is my personal belief is that there is a respect to this profession. I collect things. I collect antiques. I, I whenever I like something, I collect it. And early 2000, when I went to Japan, I start looking for particular different type of ties. And to some extent, I was able to find something that is a little bit different. I did not like to go to my classes with the same ties. So I start hunting for ties that are looking different. Move from what is being somehow different, somewhat different, to I'm not satisfied with these ties, even if they're different. So with the years, I became worse. Just one more, just one more, and then you can't resist.、Uh, the amount of details are in these ties. When you look at a tie, it's not because it's a tie, to where it's really a piece of art. Look at the amount of. Details in these little fishes.、Um, you cannot deny the art. Different views, different type of art, different colors. It is hand painted. What this carriage is doing here? Maybe there is no meaning, but it is actually. And I'm scrambling them all over here. So here is about cartoons, and it is bold and. The whole uh, uh, <laughs> drawings on this. This actually was for an advertisement for one of the mayors in New Orleans.、Uh, somebody with this mentality of artistic, he must be also very successful in politics. However, this one in particular is very special for me. This、uh, was designed by my students, and if you look at these numbers here, it's all written by names of a student. It is very special to me,、uh, and I don't think there's anything、uh, like that. 
they knew of course that it is computer science there is a code there and there is the old computer I think it is beautiful and I really appreciate it and I keep it aside usually completely from maybe because like of what we're going through I don't have like many things to say right now but I I do respect him a lot Proud of him? Yeah. I'm. Well, whenever, yeah, I forgot about this because of, because of COVID and everything. I I stopped seeing, like all of these good things, uh, from like outside of my house. But I remember when I'd go to his lectures and stuff like that. Like his teaching is like so interesting and funny that. When he'd want me to study in in his class, when I was like in his class, I would always look at him and I'd be noting down whatever he's saying instead. And then he'd come back to me and tell me, what did you finish? And I'm like, I didn't do anything. How can I do some, how can I work on what I have to do if you're more interesting than my own teachers? Like, <laughs> yeah. And whenever I'd see that my, his students um, compliment him and stuff like that. And I see like that he's all over on Reddit and stuff. I'm like, that's my dad. Like my dad is that cool. I wear these ties because I like to wear the ties. And, uh, but the side effect of the reaction from the student uh, re made me really realize that the student see it and enjoy it and in the end, Yes, you can be the professor, but there is nothing but a human being underneath. As you know, Dr. Hanna is uh, 30 years he's teaching, and we didn't know that. So one day, my, uh, my aunt, she's in Washington, and she graduated in 1999 at Concordia, computer engineering. So one day I was with my uh, aunt walking uh, through the uh, EV building to, in downtown, and suddenly we met Dr. Hanna. And then he said, oh, hi, Paragol. And then he looked at uh, my aunt. We are, we are so similar. And then uh, my aunt, Bita, said, um, oh, you were my teacher. I remember I had a surgery, and you gave me the exam so much sooner to me to just because the date of the exam, it was my date of surgery. But you, pro you get me promised that I don't share with anyone, which is I did. And then Dr. Hannah looked at me and said, like, that's why you are so similar face for me, Paragol. You, you, yes, he was remembered. 30 years after, he remembered my aunt and me, and it, it, was, sh it was shocking. It was, for me, it was like, oh my God, you know, I, sometimes I'm in the street and five years old, like my students see me, say, oh, hi, Paragol, like you were my teacher. I was like, no clue. Uh, I, it, for me, it was so shocking. It was interesting. And I've heard, a, this, was, this didn't happen in my class, but I heard at one time some student just completely refused the no laptop or no phone policy. That might have been Pargo's class. And he just, the class wouldn't start and he had to call security up there and then had to, you know, security had to take someone out by force. Um, it's a bit ridiculous on the student's part, but I was not there. This might be a rumor. One of the many Hana rumors. Because I had them in uh, two classes, uh, one in C++ class, one in operating system class. And uh, it was around 1998, so that's around 21 years ago. Um, I, after I graduated, I moved to the state with a big company called Corning. And uh, after that, uh, six months uh, down the road, I was working in Pennsylvania. Uh, we got laid off because the whole plant shut down. So at that time, I called Professor Hanna and I asked him, what should I do? Because we had a good relationship afterward. So what should I do? He said, listen, now it is shut down and it is laid off, right? So now it is the time to negotiate and to make the deal. What are you going to do? Are you going to relocate you again to another uh, branch of the company or are they going to pay you for moving everything back to Canada because usually they don't. So he gave me excellent hands and excellent ideas which I used and indeed I got relocated to Virginia where I live now. I've been almost over 20 years in Virginia. 
I remember that uh, I went to his uh, office, uh, I was uh, explaining about uh, one of my courses. And then he said that, well, no, she are working as a TA. And I was like, what? No, I cannot. I'm like shy to talk in, this, uh, in front of the other students specifically because uh, like my English, because it was not fluent and good. So uh, uh, then he said, no, that's it. And it was very good actually for me because uh, it helps a lot. Um, I enjoyed working in Concordia and it was a good experience for me talking to students and it was a good CV as well. So it, it helps me a lot. I met Dr. Hanna in sort of a strange way. Um, I took one of his classes, I didn't really know who he was or anything. It turned out he was a great professor. I really enjoyed being in the lectures, but I was pretty quiet back then and I just sort of sit there and listen. And um, you know, one day I'm just studying in the lab and I get a call, a phone call. And uh, I pick it up and it's him, it's Dr. Hanna. I said, how, how does he have my phone number? You know, I had no idea. And first of all, why is he calling me? And he says, uh, he says, Anthony, he says, how are you, blah, blah, blah. And he says, do you want to teach? And I said, of course I want to teach. I don't know how he knew, right? We never had a conversation about this. And, you know, I've been sort of teaching tutorial sessions ever since, for maybe about four or five years because of him. He allowed me to put, be put in that place and make me grow uh, in terms of a, that teaching perspective, which I've been waiting for for a while, actually. I've always wanted to get up in front of people and sort of explain these concepts in a very clear way, and he just knew that I'd be able to somehow. But by being his TA, I, I used to be very shy, and so he helped me to improve like my teaching skills, my knowledge, and also my personality, be less shy be able to communicate better, know more people. So he impacted me in my uh, academic life, I would say, and also personality. Two years ago, uh, during my first work term, it was a fall semester, and we all needed to take this class called Data Structures and Algorithms. So we had to take it, or else we'd be uh, graduating a year later. We were all worried, you know, we're gonna be held back a year. What can we do? We can't attend class. So obviously, who came to our rescue? Dr. Eamon Hanna. The only problem was, though, that he was teaching this class during the day while we were all at work. What he told us to do is, uh, every once, every Tuesday, just come to him at 8.15 at night and he said, read the PowerPoints that I post. Just read them. If you have any questions, just come to me and I'll explain them to you. Whenever we went to him and we asked him our questions, it was like he was reteaching the whole class all over again. It was, it was just amazing. And most of the time we'd be there till 10.30, 11, sometimes even later. And it would always be us saying, okay, you know, it's late. I want to go home. You know, I'm tired. I have work tomorrow. Him, for him, it was like, round one of a boxing match, you know, he could have kept teaching us for the rest of the night. He was so useful to us. Yes, he has helped me um, in, in a more personal way before. Welcome to Zornica's TV show. The first half of the show is dedicated to Concordia University's most popular professor in the Computer Science and Engineering Department. Dr. Eamon Hanna holds four teaching awards at Concordia University, for which he was awarded in 2012. Eamon Hanna is the most rated professor at Concordia University. The moment you step into class, he knows who you are, he knows everyone's names. I don't know how he did it, he has like superpower. He'll go above and beyond for you. He's almost like an uncle or like a brother. He's like almost family. He reminds me of elementary school and high school, how your teacher would know every single thing about you, your name, what's happening in your life. My ability to understand the subject to Professor Hannah. I could go and like just email Hannah and say, okay, yeah, I have this issue, personal issue, whatever, I want to talk to you. He said, no problem, he's going to answer you, no problem. Like he can have a lot of stuff, he said, no problem, we're going to meet with you. And you're going to talk and a very genuine talk about how you could tackle it, what's the problem. You're the best teacher in CS and so on. A common viewpoint held by many students, I'm sure. He told us how the grading scheme worked. He said, like, and this is the last time I ever want to talk about your grades because from now on, I don't want to hear about grades this, grades that. I want to hear about learning. Definitely the best teacher I've ever had. In class, it's very apparent that Dr. Hanna knows what he's saying and he cares for the students because the courses are made so meticulously that it's almost impossible for people not to understand by the end of the class. It's one thing to talk about how much you actually care about students versus 
actually being really consistent in action. I don't really think there's one person who's ever left his class that hasn't been impacted by him. Just recently, nearly 200 students gathered on a late Monday night to surprise Dr. Hanna and congratulate him for his 30 years of teaching. Winter 2019, I kind of overheard that the upcoming summer he would be doing, celebrating 30 years of teaching and I told to myself, uh, this cannot go unnoticed. I, I feel like I had one job, it was just to gather all of these students together, get them together, because I knew that all of them had the desire to show him show him love, you know. It was a really hard task, but I did it. <laughs> yeah, start singing. Come on, come on, guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. The guitarist is coming in front just because he has a song. We have a song. We need a guitar. Okay. <laughs> We love you! We love you too, guys! Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Around, around February of 2020, when we knew that something, something stink, something wasn't looking right. And for a moment we felt, okay, two weeks, fine. Students will not lose their term, uh, nothing will happen. Uh, we come back in two weeks. 
in about a week, everybody knew that this is not going to be two weeks. Uh, the university came back and said we're moving online. Really, we had five days to move completely from our normal way of running classes, exams and everything. And to make a sharp edge to convert everything to online. Five days. How did we do it? I honestly don't know. I needed a whiteboard. I needed to be able to describe things. I converted kind of my kitchen area. The whiteboard was there. I got a projector to adjust and make videos and everything. But think about it. Five days. Five days. You wake up in the morning. You sit in your seat in front of your computer until midnight, one o'clock in the morning. What is fun about having no personal interaction eye to eye with your student? What is fun when everything runs through a small computer screen? What is fun when, when a student wants to talk to you, he cannot look in your eye and straight forward and talk to you? Is it fun? No, it's not fun. Where you come and you start the lecture, the lecture has a hundred students, then you have one guy telling you I am the Prime Minister of Canada. I'm good, I'm good. Let me adjust Hello, my... Hey, Vatam, how are you? I'm good, and you? Good. Okay, guys, so we're gonna start right away. It brings us to something again, that, that's, I'm going to come back to that in a second. What is the complexity? What is the complexity of get? Because there must be something that I will get at the benefit of these unique keys. What is the complexity of get? Come on guys, what is the complexity of get? carrying a complexity of n square to put in the priority queue. But now, that array now is sorted. So all I need to do is take it and dump it, which will give me a complexity of n. It's going to be a complexity of n log n. So I carry a complexity of n log n to put them on the heap. And then I remove them one by one. I told you, many names in computer science are overloaded. So what is that map? That map looks like that. What is that exactly? This looks like the cabinet at your medical center. One. One. And how much it will take me to remove? We'll stop here. One. One. What does it mean? It means that we just wasted 10 minutes of our lives. So we just lost 10 minutes of our lives because we talked about something that ended up horrible. No, I don't have that. You, you, can, you can put... God, if you're... If you're uh, if you're not asking, mute yourself because it, it makes noise for everybody. So, and I'm done, or should I go mad about this? And the answer is, yes, we have to go mad. Give me your question. Now it become the second part. The second part, how can I compress? So should we just do it or should, because it's simple. Take the code mod n, I end up in the array. What if key one equals three, key two equals three, key three equals three, key four equals three? And maybe that's a perfect way to end the week and the start the weekend. It's really perfect. Because finally we have something that is really brilliant. Sir, I know you normally do this anyway, um, yes. but at the beginning of the next lecture, would you be able to just give like a quick, quick summary of kind of like the concluding remarks that we made at the end of this lecture? Uh, since when I didn't do that? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, sir. You and, too. Uh, same to everyone else. Take care, guys. All right. Bye, Ryan. Any other question, guys? Sir, I was still not clear about how uh, 101 resulted into no collisions. The Z is going to... the number of collisions. No. Is this an optimization? You're, you're, you're not incorrect. I gave up on trying to change things, uh, which I don't think I should give up on, but that's just how it is. Like, in my mind, it's like, 
I can't really do anything about it. I talked to him about it. I told him. I complained. I said that it's not fair that that I can't like I can't even come downstairs to to eat while he's like in his lectures and stuff. Anything like I couldn't do anything. I had to stay in my room and I would close my door until ten o'clock or like even later whenever he'd finish. So, but I think I I got used to it. It's not something I want to get used to, but I I think I had to get used to it. It is really caring, like nice of him that he he puts time for his students even like at two a.m. I just wish that he enjoyed his. I I don't know. I don't because I can't really understand his point of of view of things. Why he'd wanna devote like every minute of his life into his work. But I can't. I can't really understand what's going through his mind. I'm not saying I'm against it, but I'm not saying it's completely right either. Like, I'm sure that even if he's like the best professor, there should have some time to himself. But I feel like that is his time. Like, so I can't. I can't quite get it. I have a. I have a really big passion for. For singing, because uh, I want to. Since I've been through a lot, I want to share these stories with other people so that they can know that they're not alone, and so that they feel better when they listen to my music. And it's really, it really makes me happy that I can do something that would make one person in this world happier. Uh, of course, my music really helps me. Like at some point, I really wanted to give up. Everything like I felt really dejected, but then like a few minutes later, I'd start singing and then I'd feel way better. Tous les jours dans la pluie, dans le soleil, dans la nuit. I don't care, I don't care. You can take me anywhere. Mesmerized by your eyes, you are like a Like a wake of light N'importe comment, n'importe quand Je pense à toi constamment J'ai tombé en amour, je ne sais pas comment It gets me happy, it gets me mad I can't ever seem to get to forget you No matter how hard I try, you turn me bittersweet Ton charme a pris mon cœur Le jour que je t'ai rencontré Je ne sais pas comment Je ne te connais même presque pas And there's also me having my like delusional crush, so I sing about that too. Love is love. I hate admitting it, cause it's like an almost impossible thing. Like I told my friend about it, but it's somebody from a K-pop group, a very known K-pop group, and she's like, "So what?" I'm like. What do you mean? So what? And she said, "Love is love." So then that, now I'm saying to everybody, "Love is love." <laughs> like my dad always told me that I can't date before eighteen. So that's like I'm not like there's no rush. Like it's and I don't want to make the same mistakes that he did with relationships. My main thing is that the first person I'm gonna be with is gonna be the last person I'll be with. I don't want to. I don't want to have to go through uh, breaks, up, breakups, and dramatic, you know, those type of situations, um, because my dad's he's he's been there for me a little bit less than before, so I really feel like I I need somebody to depend on. My ideal type of person, somebody who who would really be there for their family. Um, has a good fashion sense. If I could, if I could describe the person from that K-pop group, that would be exactly. He even has a lot of of different ties. So then, like when I saw that, I was like, 
if my if my partner had that type of style, then he could like fanboy with my dad about his ties. That would be funny. And I always like to to sing about like many different things, like not just one particular subject. I have a lot of lyrics, like I have over a hundred different lyrics, and almost every day I make new songs. He, I think he's proud of me. I'm not sure how, but I get the feeling that he's proud of me. Sometimes I show it to him, like when there's really a song that that I have a lot of lyrics on, I don't mind showing it to him at all, but he doesn't even have time for that. For some people, cars are just a way of transportation, and there is nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's absolutely fine. For some other people, cars, I think, are art, design, beauty, engineering. I think I belong to that. I, I love cars. Uh, uh, if I have uh, parking to park 16 or 20, I would buy 30. And the squeeze, I was 17. The, my dad said, we're going to Europe. I said, no, I don't want to go to Europe. I want a BMW. He said, no, you're going to Europe. And finally, I went to Europe. And I didn't get my BMW. A couple of months later, he said, I have a car for you. And he had a beautiful Fiat. And I said, no, I don't want a Fiat. I want a BMW. My dad smiled. He said, okay, fine. I will sell the Fiat. But next time you get your BMW, you will be the one paying for it. And that's exactly what happened. Many years later, I had to wait to buy my BMW. The best thing that my dad is that he took me with the family to Europe. Because while the cars are really beautiful, nothing worth a moment. The family memory, the really nothing worth that. So I still really appreciate it that my dad forced me to that because the memory are much better than any car. And I still love cars. I really, the times that I enjoy most with him, it's not, it's not like I want these, these big moments, you know. I just want to have, have time to just talk to him, you know. That's the, the most fun part about me and him is that we just need to talk to each other to be happy. So, yeah. the story was yeah. that when I was 15, I was like, like, oh, I can't wait to be 16, like all the other birthdays, right? And then I was like, uh, you're gonna buy me a car, right? And then he told me, absolutely not. I said, why? And then he said that I had to work on my own to get it and I had to make my own money to, to afford the car. So all this time I thought that you were I was going to like save the money that I got from my gifts and everything. And then you come up to me like recently, some out of nowhere. Yeah. And you tell me, Oh, do you like this car? Do you wanna get this car? I'll get you this car. <laughs> that does not make it was hurtful, huh? Yes, it was yeah. hurtful because I didn't spend a single penny from my gift money. Okay, you can give me the money now. No. Hey, no problem. No. Okay, if it hurts so much, I'll take the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. Yes, so that's the story. Now, I, then I got this car. Yeah. So we went to see the car, and then she looked at the car, she sat inside, her mouth go like, ah, that car, inside, it's beautiful. But I asked her, 
When do you want a car? I said I want a car. I said okay, but a car like uh, convertible or normal? I said what do you mean by convertible or normal? It has to be convertible. So I think he's getting my disease. It's not a good what thing. What do you mean? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. So, so that that was. Uh, I. I have this in common with him that I like cars as well and I love his ties. He just wears things that other people don't wear. And I guess that's where I got it from too like um I think that we're very close uh especially because of all of uh the things that we've been through. And he raised me as like more like a best friend. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to have to go put words into his mouth, but I would imagine that I, I think he probably got into this, this, this profession because of a passion for the students. So we probably from the get-go, he was driven by that. I, I think he just loved teaching and, and that's the only motivation he had. I, think, I believe that, yeah. Um, he's very careful, like he cares about everyone. So. Also, he's a professor, he cares about his students, but I believe it's because of his personality. Like, it's not because he's a professor. He's very careful, a very careful person. He values people, regardless of their gender, their age, their position. Like, he's, to me, he's very kind, generous, and he's a giver. Like, he doesn't do something to get benefits. He just does it, I don't know, maybe he gets satisfied, I don't know. Like, I, I think <laughs> he's very, like, he's special and very good. Maybe because he's happy. Um, you know, usually when people are not very happy about life in general, they're just not very giving. But when you're happy, you're very giving. And I think Dr. Hanna is like that. He's very generous with his everything, time, attention, and all that stuff. And it's very caring. It's like love, right? It doesn't have to be like romantic, but like it's just like he loves teaching. He loves students. He loves like I guess setting an example and building a future because like we're learning from him and we'll grow up to be like whatever he teaches, right? So I think it's more like the love and passion he has for what he does as well as life in general. Like he understands like a lot of things, I think. Yes, I, I think he, beside his, uh, he have a passion for teaching, but he wants him also to be good in their life. Like at the same time, I can kind of relate to it because I did tutor somebody as for English. And it was, it was something that I found pretty fun to do. And I realized that being a teacher may not be that bad but sometimes like when I see my teachers I'm like why would you why would you want to do this like that's like you I'm probably more for the openness between a teacher and a student in general um, I, I can understand how some you know some professors would decide to draw uh, lines and I think even it would be smart even if you're making the choice to be open with your students and let them divulge personal information and you know maybe become friends I, I think that's fine it's probably still a good idea to draw some kind of line somewhere of course um, but I, I find that that line shouldn't be cut very short at least it, you know you should allow uh, and be open uh, for your students to come and talk people are uh, talking about different teachers and we start talking about Dr. Hanna. Sometimes it's a question mark for us too, like why a teacher should should be as kind and as nice as Dr. Hanna to to the students. Can do 50% of this and still people will be happy with him. We have a puzzle. There are different parts in the puzzle, and the teacher is there to help the student to complete this puzzle. You want to talk about photos? I'm not uh, an album guy, so my photos are all like stored in boxes like that. I had to dig for them. I didn't see them for a really long time, and I was looking at the box actually now, and I see this is actually a, a cigar box. It belongs to my dad. This is like now my history I think it is about a lot of things about my friends my family and I think really to be honest this is what 
made me whatever I am now, good or bad. I'm looking at this picture, actually it has some of my very best friends. I see here I have uh, Tarek and Magid and Ayman. Of course we keep relation until now, of course not as much as I would love. I don't know what they were doing here, I think they maybe were trying to throw me to the floor or to the water or whatever, I have no clue. Uh, here I don't know what we came up with this extremely strange idea to hold one straight on top of our shoulders, whatever it is. It's interesting, you will see pictures at night with pajamas. So I'm sitting there at the back and we were exercising. And really, really, we had no cell phones at the time, so we had to really enjoy things in a different way. Did it share the moment? I think we did. But I don't think we cherish this moment, we did cherish them enough. That's maybe the bad part. I honestly believe we appreciated the time. We knew that it was fun, but sometimes I feel like we did not appreciate them enough. Somewhere in this ancient Egypt, I, I, I can't tell, you know, sometimes, like the song say, you, you remember names and faces but to whom do they belong you cannot anymore it was like as if it is a different uh, lifetime or to be more precise as i feel it's a different life i'm seeing some letters likely love letters i better keep them closed from the card name it looks like this is one of the good nice when there were good nice in egypt i believe so it say uh, uh, Sahara city, which says the telephone, the telephone was six digits at the time. I believe you will see, okay, I think it is more like a graphic photo here with a belly dancer and my parents and some of their friends sitting there and this. Wow, this is my grandfather. Dr. Ghali. And he was, uh, he was a fantastic guy, absolutely fantastic. He finished his medical degree in France. He came back to Egypt and because of him I exist, I guess. My dear uncle, Dr. Safwat. It is, we're a very big family and a very tight family. Like there is no boundary between me, my aunts, my cousin, and uh, I think this is a lifestyle that we grow. This is actually my brother. He was hidden in the middle. Oh, and I believe my mom. <laughs> it is that I could not recognize her for, for a moment. So this is my brother. This is my mom here. And this brings me back uh, to, again, my friends here. The, the one that is here that I'm with, it's little girl, my best friend, sister, Nivin. And I see his other sister, Manal. These are like my sisters. Of course, this little girl, Nevin, she became a very beautiful young lady with kids now. But this is, I believe this was in Cyprus. This is my dad and my brother. This is my beautiful cousin, Maha. They were, they were extremely beautiful. They're still extremely beautiful. So I see here... This is my mom, and this is Moga, and this is Mona, and this is Salwa. This is my cousin, Nawal, and uh, she actually uh, was, when I was a kid, she was my math teacher. I think I give her a lot of credit for, for that. So the following pictures, these are my pictures for my aunt. She looked like a movie star. She still looked like a movie star. This is my other aunt, Moga. Oh, that's my grandma. This is my grandma. Actually, I was fortunate to have her. When she passed away, she was nearly 100. So, and she was completely alert until the day she passed away. This is my uncle wife, Didi. Like my mom and my cousin. We call her Bingo. This is my aunt and her husband during their wedding. This is my cousin. I'm good. And uh, this is a picture of uh, my parents' wedding.
They loved each other crazily. I think from the time they met until the time my dad passed away, they were in love until I think even my mom is still in love with my dad. I think my dad who passed away f only a few years ago, I think he's still in, in love with my mom. This is actually when I was maybe a few months old. It was my dad, my mom on the beach and me. And if you look at my face here, I always say that I was very grumpy. I think I was lacking ice cream. I I'm sure from the look on my face, I think I need ice cream or something. It's, uh, actually, Clarice's mom, somewhere in Quebec City. Uh, And this was in my elementary school, one of the best schools really, and uh, it was run by nuns, tilting. I, 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 I used to take all my pictures with my head going one way, so I had to re recognize myself based on that. So if you see everybody's head straight and I'm going like that. I remember one time uh, during the summer, because during the summer we go also to play in the school and there was a little tree. And the tree had that small branch that was really broken, really broken. Like if you blow on it, it will fall. And I think I tried to hang on it and it broke, of course. And I was disciplined for that. I still remember that I was disciplined because I broke a little branch of a tree. And uh, I, it was really fun. It, it was really, really a uh, different time. Different life completely. Uh, and I'm not sure if I would trade it for anything that we have today because I wish these moments come back uh, now with my family even for two seconds. Uh, sometime I wish it, it come back. But neither. I know they are not coming back. What we do, we have our memories and the memories uh, luckily stay and you know, uh, for me really nobody dies there. Uh, a person die when nobody remember him. My dad passed away at 83, the age of 74. Uh, he was working uh, full time and he traveled one day from Germany. And the next morning we were wake, walking uh, at uh, the lake in Toronto and he fell down and we called an ambulance. They ran, they said that his heart stopped. Shortly after that, when he was fine, I told him, tell him that stop, it's enough. You're, you don't need anything really, I mean, stop. I mean, 74, you're going through all of this trouble, stop. And I remember he was sitting beside me in the car, he said, well, if I stop working, I die. I don't think I can ever stop working. So yes, maybe I am busy, loaded. Uh, of course, uh, it took a toll at uh, everybody around me. I think when you talk to Clarice, my daughter, she's gonna be screaming. Uh, she's telling me that all the time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But she knows that uh, I, 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 I love what I'm doing. So yes. Uh, uh, one day, uh, once in a while, I feel like I have time, but I feel lost. 
I don't know if this is the best lifestyle or not, but that's just me. Like this is how I am. So I, I yes, I am busy, and if you're thinking I'm enjoying it, I don't know if enjoying is the right word, but this is how I think I want my life to be. I think in 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 that sense, I feel a lot of a lot of guilt that I wish I have more time. Somehow life dictate how we function. I don't think it is really up to us. The trouble is that how to find the balance and I think I have a trouble with that. But do you know how many people in life do what they love? Not many. So you have to do it and don't regret it. Because there is no guarantee uh, that if you could have done it in a different way, it would have been better. But I think if you're looking for the down point, my first ex, I got married twice. And maybe you can make a judgment by now that, okay, work must have done something there. Uh, don't worry about me. Uh, the third one will be fine. So uh, I think what the most down point that happened there when my first ex had uh, cancer at 28. She was 28 and she had cancer. I think this is the worst moment in my life. Um, and I think it still is. Uh, it is, you get into a type of life changing where between denial and anger and wonder why and uh, the treatment was horrible horrible um, she's she did beat cancer and i'm so proud of her about that but uh, it was very difficult time difficult is not the word i think it was uh, the, the worst time from beginning to end um, this is when you feel like sometimes life can take you in one direction and then take you up and then completely free fall you and you're done um, in a sense it, it everything happened in your life changes you even small events change you nothing really happened that doesn't change you sometimes sit with a student student come and say i have a trouble i can come to my office and when they start talking about the trouble uh, my mind frees the amount of it is the stories are are horrific and it's not only sometime about sickness sometimes about horrific stuff that happen in their life if you are a professor this is part of being a professor it's not only about teaching about going to class about passing the material even in, even if it is in the best way to buy the material i think you have to understand that in front of you there is a human being and these human beings have life events that if you don't handle these life events forget about educating them it's not going to happen uh, how can somebody come to learn and study uh, if his family is under siege or his uh, his uh, girlfriend is uh, pregnant by mistake when he's still 18 and she's still 18. I mean, this type of stuff, I mean, you cannot ignore it. I mean, it, it happened in life. Being a professor, you cannot break the two. You have to have that compassion in, in both aspects, in the aspect of providing them with what they need to learn and with handling their life issues at the same time. So I think student life is the hardest. They are under financial trouble. They are under huge stress from their degree. They are under huge stress from being worried about how their family going to view them. Their, their success at some point is not really about them succeeding, but about their family seeing them succeeding. You have to have that type of uh, uh, at least the minimum courtesy to understand that sometimes things may go wrong. Sometimes 
things may not be perfect. His best qualities are that he's very, wait, I don't know. I was going to say that he's very patient, but he can be extremely impatient too. Um, his best qualities, I should have more than that. Like I should have things coming to me right away, but I don't know. He wants the best for everybody, I think, which is really a uh, nice thing as a teacher. Like, I can see why a lot of people look up to him. I think my favorite memories are the ones where we go on vacation, because that's when we actually have time together and he's not, like, on his computer answering emails, stuff like that. Um, like, when we went to New York, that was really fun. Uh, we would walk like seven hours a day and then we'd come back really late like at at like 1 a.m. by bus and I'd sleep in the bus and then he'd wake me up and we'd go back to the hotel. It is really caring like nice of him that he he puts time for his students even like at 2 a.m. but I I just wonder like why doesn't he just take a little bit of that time and put it into trying to fix things as a family. Like, I wish that we would, would have, like... I, I think maybe the best thing that happened in my life was Clarice. I didn't really, I don't think I am that type that want to think kids and like to be surrounded by them and raising them. I, it is just not me. It is somebody else. But then when my uh, ex-wife uh, got pregnant, I think something else happened. It was very uh, bizarre because when we went for, uh, when we went to look for the names and I said, I, I gonna look for a name. So I looked, name I said, I gonna call her Clarice. My ex said, okay, fine, uh, let us find the name of a boy. I said, no, I'm not looking for a name of a boy. I will not look, for, I'm going to have a girl. And I remember when I went for ultrasound, the, the, the nurse there was taking the ultrasound. It's a girl. I think when Clarice came, it was like the best thing that happened in my life. And she's a fantastic girl. She's really, uh, I think she's very talented. She's extremely uh, sweet and I think she had a beautiful future in front of her and I, I she's really everything to me and will try my best to be at least a good dad if I'm not the perfect dad because I don't think that I am as good as people that I see sometime so I don't think that I am the best dad you can ever in the world but I try to be a good one I try to be the best I can so sometimes I look at other people and to some extent I envy them for being so fantastic and so patient and so dedicated and uh, I think it hits me sometimes in my head. I was married twice. I have to make a, a, a realistic judgment here that if I had to get divorced twice and that I told you I'm fine, maybe the third time is going to be the best time. I'm done. And I think so and I hope so. If I look at my relation and I see that there are <laughs> constant uh, issues happening, I have to, at, even if it is not true, I have to uh, I, I admit or at least accept that it is, maybe it is because of me. I mean, yeah, and that's maybe my advice to all my students. If you wanted to uh, to, to, to really make a family, uh, make sure that you have time for this family. You can ask by why you did not apply that to yourself. And I wish I have time with my mom, I, 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 with my brother, with my friends. I mean, always say, unfortunately, that when I look at my dad, unfortunately, I don't feel like I am successful anymore. That is trouble. So I don't feel I'm successful. I, I said, um, 
in, in every perspective, what he did, I mean, to, to the different eras, a different time, a different place, and what he did, uh, I don't think I can, I, I don't think I can do today. I mean, I feel, and not only in what he did, even the small things, like when I look at my parents sometime in general, I don't feel like, uh, uh, I say, my dad made it. He was married to my mom until he passed away. They were married for 50 years, a little bit more maybe. I, and I, I wonder why I cannot be like that. I mean, why I could not, you know, like I could not keep a family. I mean, why? And I don't feel that successful in, in that sense. The most beautiful thing is that he made me learn about life without teaching me. He just, he was just there and I learned. I remember when he was uh, in the, the very last couple of years, he was really, really ill. And uh, I had uh, trouble in, I really had trouble with my divorce, which was very hard. And it was really horrible. And I went to him, he was in his bed and he looked at me and said, uh, don't worry. Uh, your troubles will end. Nothing in life doesn't end. It will end. Everything is uh, a lot of stuff I didn't uh, see. Clarice uh, uh, complaining that uh, uh, I could have done better. Of course, that, I said that myself many times. Do I have regrets? Strangely enough, I really don't. I think I give what I could give. And... Uh, I know in many perspectives, uh, sometimes is not best and sometimes will never be best. It is wonderful to see how people view you and talk about you and love you back. And of course, it is hard to get also the things that nobody wants to hear. And Uh, but it's life. I hope what they said that intersecting with me at some point in their life changed something. Of course, I am also glad that Clarice put things up front straight. Sometimes it's harsh and there is no denial. Uh, it could have been always better. And maybe there is still a chance. I'm, I'm not dead yet. And I hope that we can come to a point where things are really, really good. And maybe she'll remember the second part. time of need he pulled through for me. He says if even if you're in trouble, whatever, like just go ahead. How am I supposed to not get emotional? <laughs> it's already emotional. Even his daughter would stay up late with him because she wouldn't want to be home alone. So she would come to the university and for as long as he stays in the university to care of the students wasn't like this until like a year ago it started to be even like I started to feel even more sad and more depressed. When you look at a tie, it's not because it's a tie, but where it's really <laughs> a 
for me so far. <laughs> Look at the amount of details in this little fishes. Um, <laughs> I can't really do anything about it. I talked to him about it. I told him I complained. I said that it's not fair that that I can't like I can't even come downstairs to to eat while oh. he's like in his like this and stuff. Oh, that was such a pain. Anything. I couldn't do anything. I had to stay in my room. My dad, my dad's having a new relationship, and it's bringing me a lot of uh, anxiety. It's really, it really has been putting me down. Uh, for a long period of time, I was crying like every day. Like I, like I don't feel I, like this house is mine anymore. They didn't have to get but, to that. Uh, and there's also me having my like delusional crush. Oh no. So I think about oh, that Oh, you're not. <sighs> love is love. Cause it's like an almost impossible thing. Like I told my friend about it. But it's my somebody. Friend. His best qualities are that he's very. Like, I don't know. I was gonna say that he's very <laughs> patient, but he can be extremely impatient too. Uh. And I remember when I went for ultrasound, the, the the nurse there was taking the ultrasound. It's a girl. I think when Clarice came, it was like the best thing that happened in my life. And he's a fantastic girl. He's really. Uh, I'm not crying. <laughs> She's extremely uh, sweet, and I think he had a beautiful future in front of her. And I, I, he's really everything to me, and will try my best to be his, at least a good dad, if I'm not the perfect dad, because I don't think that I am as good as people that I see sometimes. So I don't think that I am the best dad you can ever in the world, but I try to be. No, I I'm not crying. The best I can. So sometimes I look at other people and uh, to some extent I envy them for being so fantastic and so patient and so dedicated and uh, I think it hits me sometimes in my head. Do I have regrets? Strange enough, I really don't. I think I give what I could give you. And, uh... Uh, I think that it was really good. At that time, I did, I was going through so much. Uh, I learned how to cope with it a little better. I'm much better than I was back when we first uh, interviewed me. There's a lot more to this family than just you know, me being sad. I was just really calling out for help back then. Like I was really sad. So maybe I didn't know what exactly I was saying, what to expect. Maybe I thought that these clips were not gonna really be in the documentary. What bothers me is not, it's not what I said, but it's what I didn't say. I feel sad that back then I couldn't see how much he loved me. If I put that problem aside, I know that he really does care about me. I, I know my dad, okay? And I don't think that he doesn't have regrets on this. I'm sure that he feels, he must feel sad about some things that he's done and he could have done better. I just wish that someday he will find the time for himself. Things might be good again, probably. I mean, things are good. They're not that bad. I, if I look at the full picture, they're really not that bad. I have a dad that I can rely on, that I can talk to openly about about anything. So, I I know I'm repeating myself, <laughs> but I think that in the future, uh, it's just gonna be me and my dad, my best friend.
come to class first day And he calls you by your name When you reach out for your phone And you know it's danger zone And then all the class he goes Don't get it, he won't go on And it's time to end the day But we just wanna stay Duck on Duck on As the sea is on the ground He's no doubt the best you have And his glasses are always full Tears outside you have to pull On and on the glass goes on Don't get it, it won't go on And it's time to end the day But we just wanna stay He'll stay up late for question He'll answer for the emails might even call you on the phone Doc Anna Doc Anna Doc Anna And then on the glass goes on Don't get it, it won't go on And it's time to end the day But we just Wanna well,